Hello students and welcome to another video going over Riemann sums. In this video we're going to be covering trapezoidal sums and we're going to start to compare all of the different calculations that we've made in the previous videos. So make sure you've done those before seeing this video. Go ahead and look up the formula for a trapezoid and let's get started. I told you to look up the area of the trapezoid but Honestly, I'm just going to give it to you here, but this is going to be like the only geometry formula that you're going to want to recall. Trapezoidal Riemann sums come up on calculus AP exams every once in a while, probably once every four or five years. And so a lot of students don't actually spend the time to, to work on trapezoidal sums, but that's not going to be you guys. You guys are the best of the best students and you guys are actually going to know what the formula for trapezoid is and how to use it. So what we're going to do here is basically a trapezoidal sum is a connection between left and right hand Riemann sums. So what I want to do is I want to find the calculation from 1 to 7 of f of x dx, the integral for that. Okay. And in order to do that, we're going to use um, a height of two units. Now, don't worry that it says height right now. We're going to still divvy up our rectangles. I know I'm getting to uh, trapezoids right now, but we're still going to go from here from one to three. But what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line up to one f of one and a line of two f of three. And then you're going to connect the two. And that is actually the shape of a trapezoid if you turn your head sideways. So when we're looking at these calculations, this, when you're turning your head sideways, is actually going to be your height. This here is going to be base 1, and this line is going to be base 2. And then you're going to add up the area as you go through all of them. So our next one, this next trapezoid is going to be here, and we're going to connect those. You notice here how we have a new trapezoid, and they actually share a side between the first trapezoid. And then lastly, we have this trapezoid here and we're gonna find our last trapezoid. So you do have the height. The height is going to be the length um, of the interval and you have base one and base two. And I, what ends up always confusing students is the fact that it's height, but it's going horizontally. Really either just tilt your head or you can think about it as base times height one plus height two if that kind of helps you out. So as I write down these calculations, I see that I'm gonna have one half times two, because our height, the length of our height is gonna be two. And then in our first trapezoid, I'm gonna have base one, which is calculated at f of one, plus base two, which is calculated at f of three. And that gets me my first trapezoid. So I'm gonna keep going, one half times two, and then I'm gonna get times base one, which is f of three, plus base two, which is f of five. And then I'm gonna keep it going with our third trapezoid. I have one half times two, and I'm gonna multiply that by base one, which is f of five, plus base two, which is f of seven. And as I simplify this, I notice I have a one half times two I can factor out, which is really just one, but I'll worry about that later. And then I have one f of one, but I have two f of threes. That's that share side I was talking about. So I'm gonna have two f of threes. And then I have two f of fives. And then I have one f of seven. So we're gonna make our calculation. We're gonna approximately come out to 38.667. Go ahead and type it into your calculator to actually confirm that. But that's how you use trapezoidal sums. I think it's easier just to go, okay, where are my endpoints? Okay, I'm going from one to three or one to two or 0.5 to 1.5 or something like that. And then just drawing a line straight up from there and then connecting those two. And you're gonna see that it always comes in at an angle. Really make a flashcard and write down the formula for a trapezoid. Go ahead and try this again here. But now we're gonna go at an interval length of one unit this time. All right, and that is going to finish off our second problem. Notice how close we had 39.667 and 38.667. And I'm, we're gonna now start to move into a comparison between all of the values that we've had so far. So for now, what I want you to do is go through all these approximations, write down the values that we've had, 
And then I want you to write down, do you think these are over approximations or under approximations of that area? So for now, what I want you guys to finish with is just go ahead and put a star next to the approximation that you think is actually closest to the exact value. There's no wrong answer here. So just kind of look at where they all tend to go. What we're going to do here in this space is in the next lesson, I'm um, not in the next video, but in the next lesson, we're actually going to come back to this problem after we learn how to calculate definite integrals. But that's why I want you to fill out this table so we can come back here and actually look at some of these values. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use Riemann sums, but from tabular values. You're going to see how some of these calculations, some of the ideas that you have from these graphs are going to come into play. Of course, if you need any help with any of these values or if you're not sure how these trapezoidal sums are working out, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez. This is Mr. Hernandez Teaches.